In WWDC, they announced a lot of stuff, but I wanted to dive into the new macOS system and Apple's new silicon chips. So let's uncover it right now. Hello everyone, my name's Mike and here at Tech Car Moon, we uncover tech at home and in video. So hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more, but if you wanna know my thoughts on these new updates, we'll stick around to the end and to find out what this means for your existing Macs. macOS has been updated to Big Sur and along with this comes with a slew of new features. First of all is the redesign. Apple has redesigned everything from the icons to the layouts. They aren't huge redesigns, but they are welcome as it looks a bit more modern and moves away from their flat icons to a more 3D look. It really looks like they've taken a sort of cue from their old MacBook systems because the icons icons weren't as flat back then and they've kind of gone back to that design. Now they've also changed the dock design which floats from the bottom which looks a little bit nicer especially with the new icons that have been redesigned. They've updated apps like Photos, Mail and Finder which they've made some very simple improvements which to be honest does make things a bit easier with less steps when you're trying to get things done. Everything now has this translucent look like the menu bar for example. They've also made other changes like the notification center and the controls to things like sounds and brightness with a thing like a slider, as well as having Wi-Fi and Bluetooth controls within the notification center, which means that the menu bar on the top has fewer icons, which I really prefer because I really like that clean look. Now, if you do like having those quick controls to those settings, then you can just literally drag and place those icons in the top of the uh, menu bar. The notification center also also looks really nice and they've also grouped notifications together as well rather than having a huge list of them like we found in Catalina. Another important rollout is Mac Catalyst which won't mean a lot for us who aren't coders but is super important for coders because of what they can do with this for us. We can now start to see our favorite iPhone and iPad apps in the Mac systems, which means that we are less likely to leave our Macs to access an application which we might typically use in uh, an iPhone or an iPad. One huge thing which might actually make me switch back to Safari full time is the fact that Safari can load websites up to 50% faster than Chrome. And we all know that Safari is easy on the system too, meaning better battery life and better multitasking as well. I just wish that this was available on Windows so that all my bookmarks and any information is also updated on my Windows PC, not just on my Mac. As always, Safari has some amazing features when it comes to privacy, and this latest version takes it one step further with a privacy report button when you access websites, meaning that you can actually see who is trying to track your data when accessing those websites. And it even looks at your managed passwords and makes sure that none of your passwords have been compromised in a security Reach, which is pretty amazing to have that built into a web browser. One thing that might make it easier for me to switch to Safari may also be the new extension section of Safari, as it now is easier for developers to port over their extensions uh, that they've already made for other browsers like Chrome into Safari. This means that you won't actually be missing out on any of your favorite extensions when using Safari. But as always, Apple makes sure that privacy is most important and it actually gives you control over how and which websites these extensions work for. I also like the idea of a customizable start page as this is something that I'm relatively used to as well with Chrome. A small change that I really like that I haven't seen in other browsers is the fact that when you have several tabs open, which is something that I often do, is I'm able to hover over each of those tabs and see what page is it that I'm looking at, which potentially saves me from having to click to find out what page I'm actually looking for in those tabs. Also, having built-in translation for Safari is something that has stopped me from switching over to Safari, as there are a lot of websites that I visit that aren't typically in English. So even though, yes, Apple are playing catch-up a bit when compared to other browsers, it is definitely something that, for me, is more compelling when I'm looking at a browser for my web searches. One thing that I really hope that Apple has done is fix a lot of the bugs that is found in 
Catalina, because we all know that Catalina hasn't been the most stable OS that Apple has released. But now let's talk about what we all knew was coming, and that's Apple's new ARM chips, also known as Apple Silicon. Apple Silicon is Apple's custom ARM chips for the Macs, and this is based on their iPhone and iPad chips that are found currently in those devices. Apple is no stranger to creating their own chips, which they've done for pretty much the last 10 years. But this is one big move, as their chips will now be compared to AMD and Intel chips. I can already see the videos when Apple starts to release their first Apple products with these chips inside, and we will be definitely comparing these chips to their Intel counterparts. When Apple was talking about these ARM chips, the main purpose for Apple switching to these ARM chips is because Intel are releasing, for example, more powerful chips, but they are also a lot more power hungry and less efficient, which doesn't work with Apple's design language or future design languages, which are basically to create quieter and thinner products. Apple spoke about their history of creating more power efficient, but more powerful chips in their iPhones, in their iPads, as well as things like their Apple Watch as well. And they also talked about how they plan to use these same technologies for creating their new Apple Silicon chips which I think will work favorably for Apple. Similar to Intel chips where they have different chips for different types of computers, Apple mentioned that they are working on a family of SoCs too. This means that we'll be seeing different types of uh, Apple Silicon chips depending on whether it's going to be for the iMac, for the MacBook or even things like the MacBook Pro potentially. As we've seen with macOS, they're really trying to unify a lot of their products, meaning that developers are now making applications for not just the iPhone, but also make it available for the iPad and Macintosh, meaning that for those who are deep in the Apple ecosystem, your applications that you normally love to use on your portable device, for example, like the iPhone or iPad, will now also work with the Macintosh as well, meaning that you can now have a lot more continuity between these platforms. Now you may be asking, what about my professional applications that I currently use, like Microsoft Word or Adobe Photoshop or even Final Cut Pro? Well, Apple has already thought of that and has already been working with Microsoft and Adobe, as well as their in-house Pro Apps team to develop these applications for Apple Silicon, meaning that when the first devices with these Apple Silicon chips arrive, we can hit the ground running. Because unlike Microsoft, when they released their Surface Books with these ARM chips, which if you didn't know, were basically failures because not even some of Microsoft's own applications worked on that device. The way that they've done this is by using a platform called Universal 2, which allows developers to firstly compile their apps for these new silicon chips, and secondly, allows developers to not only support these new Apple silicon chips, but also existing chips. So what this means for us who have Intel-based Macs is that these apps will continue to support us and these Intel-based chips so that we're not going to be missing out on any future updates potentially. Apple has also thought about the developers who might not want to update their applications for the new silicon chips and they have built a layer called Rosetta 2 which translates existing apps when you install them and allows the out-of-date applications to work on Apple Silicon Max, which means that basically you should have a smooth experience when transitioning to these ARM-based chips. They had even shown a graphics intensive application running with Rosetta 2, which means that this should be fine for even the most graphics intensive uh, applications. So it kind of also shows that Rosetta tool is not only a powerful tool, but a quick one at that. One thing that they didn't mention was Bootcamp. They did mention something about a virtualization uh, tool, meaning that you can run a virtual Linux environment. And they also demonstrated an application called Parallels, which allows you to do the same thing for Windows. But they never actually mentioned anything about Bootcamp. So it'll be very interesting interesting to see how this works with the new ARM-based chips. So what are my thoughts on everything that I've mentioned so far? Well, I think that this is a big turning point for Apple, as well as their design teams who design things like the Macintoshes as well, because I think that they
they've been limited with the Intel chips because firstly, it's not giving them the performance and thermals that they're looking for. And they normally have to design around these limitations. And this is in part because Intel is just struggling to manufacture efficient chips. I also think it'll be interesting to see what Apple product they introduce by the end of the year, as the MacBook Pro 13 inch has already been updated and the MacBook Air has only been updated literally a couple of months ago. But there was this rumor about the 14 inch MacBook. So does this mean that we might be seeing a standalone device or a whole new category of device for this new Apple Silicon chip, potentially a whole new 14 inch MacBook, for example. Who knows? Apple mentioned that they wanted to do this transition to these new Apple Silicon chips in two years, which is pretty fast. Now, Apple did make the transition from PowerPC to Intel within one year in 2005, which was pretty quick, but it is a lot easier to transition to a new system back then than I would say it is right now. Tim Cook also mentioned that there will be new Intel devices being launched this year too, maybe hinting at this new iMac that we've obviously spoken about before on this channel and potentially a refreshed MacBook Pro 16 inch model as well. So does this mean that you shouldn't buy an Intel based Mac right now or even in the near future? I don't think that this transition should scare you off from buying a new Intel based Mac. It certainly hasn't for me because Apple mentioned that they were going to be supporting these Intel based Macs for years to come. Now, does this mean that older models with these Intel based chips will be supported for as long as they had been? Well, I don't think so. I think that for the 2016, 2017 and 2018 Macs, I think that we'll be seeing a much shorter software update lifespan than we've seen in previous years. I think that potentially rather than seeing, let's say, you know, six to seven years of uh, software updates, I think that we might see five to six years. So not that much of a difference, but still a difference for those who I know that a lot of my viewers do keep their MacBooks and iMacs for six, seven, eight years plus. But there we have it. As always, this is a discussion. So please leave a comment down below on your thoughts and what you think about these announcements. I really want to hear your opinions on these. Also, check out the links in the description below if you want to support the channel. If you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Tech Harmoon. Drop me a like on this video and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. Also, check out these fantastic videos if you want to see more of this face. Anyway, everyone, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.